So this is these are some things that um, maybe people mistakes people make when they're buying their first real estate investment mm -hmm. um, or maybe in those early stages when they're still new in real estate or when they're just getting into real estate investing, they're learning about it and they want to become a real estate investor. Okay. Um, so the first mistake that I see all the time, especially in that learning phase is... Halfway bi-weekly podcast. John, how are you doing today, man? Good, good. How about you? I'm doing wonderful. Good. Um, you don't have the fur on today. No, no. You still look nice and warm. Yeah. Uh, big plans for Christmas? Uh, yeah, going, well, not big plans. We're staying in town, mm -hmm. going to uh, my parents' place tomorrow for Christmas Eve, and then uh, going to my in-laws' place Sunday, mm -hmm. um, and then my parents will come over for like Christmas dinner and and, and so Good what, what's going to happen is the grandparents are going to just be ogling uh, the new baby. Yeah, they love it. Do you got, I, I do you got a nice little Christmas outfit for her yet? Yeah, I think Carolyn does have some planned. You know she yeah, does. No spoilers. <laughs> oh, man, congratulations again. Yeah, yeah, uh, good you. to see you again. Yeah, you too. Um, you, we were talking again before uh, we go on, and we always do, um, some of the things that you would like to talk about during your podcast. And uh, today is mistakes that new real estate investors make. And I would imagine there are a bunch. Yeah, yeah. So this is these are some things that um, maybe people – mistakes people make when they're buying their first real estate investment mm -hmm. um, or maybe in those early stages when they're still new in real estate or when they're just getting into real estate investing, they're learning about it and they want to become a real estate investor. Okay. Um, so the first mistake that I see all the time, especially in that learning phase, is people learn just a little bit about a bunch of different types of real estate investing. So they're looking into like land development, rental properties, you know, s small rentals, multifamily, syndication, uh, commercial. They're they're learning about all these different topics, but they're not going very deep on just one topic. So they're learning a lot, but they're not learning enough. Yeah, it's not as applicable, and they're not learning mm -hmm. enough about sure. one thing, which eventually you're going to have to pick one thing and do it. Mm -hmm. So I think s settling on what you want to do and then learning as much as you possibly can about that and then you can always change gears later. You can pivot directions. You can, you know, once you accumulate a few small rental properties, you sell them off. You decide to get into commercial. You mm -hmm. decide to get into, uh, like, new construction development. Sure. So yep. you don't have to be in the same boat for the entire time. But in order to get started, you do need to learn a lot about one thing. Right. Whatever you're going to do. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's better to go uh, an inch wide and a mile deep instead of a mile wide and an inch deep. You know? Hey, there you go. Yeah. About that. So... <laughs> Uh, number two is always trying to find like creative ways to, ways to buy something with a low down payment um, rather than actually just figuring out your finances and saving up money because in real estate investing, you are going to need money. Um, and if you're always just trying to find some way to get into something for very little cash, that that's going to limit you in the long run for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I see a lot of people doing this. They're just obsessed with trying to find ways to get into things with low down payments and creative financing and stuff instead of actually just taking a look at their finances, lowering their expenses, increasing their income and saving up money because you're gonna you're gonna need money eventually. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna get very far with no money. Um, number three, uh, focusing too much on cash flow and less on appreciation. So I've made this mistake early in my career too, uh, or in my real estate investing time, mm -hmm. where you're always just looking at, oh, what's this gonna cash flow? How many units would I have to get to achieve like $3,000 a month in cash flow or whatever your goal is? But if you only buy properties that for that cash flow the most, you're gonna end up with more rundown stuff in mm -hmm. worst parts of town that need a lot more maintenance and repairs, and they're gonna be more difficult to sell. So the other thing that you need to weigh is what moves are gonna be good for appreciation. Appreciation is one of the ways you really make a lot of money in real estate. Um, and so not, it's usually properties are on a spectrum where at one end of the spectrum, they don't cash flow at all. And that doesn't make them a good investment, but they appreciate very well. And then okay. on the other end of the spectrum, and this is true about different markets as well. There could be markets where it's very hard to cash flow, but the appreciation's great. And at the other end of the spectrum is the appreciation sucks, but the cash flow is great. So you need to figure out where in that spectrum you want to be. And going all the way at one end of the spectrum or another is probably not the best place to be. Uh, somewhere in the middle is probably right. Um, and, and I just want to let the listeners know if they hear the music in the background, uh, there's a Christmas 
band concert going on right outside, outside the studio. The studio. Yeah. Hopefully it's not loud enough where they're going to come after us for ASCAP fees. But uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, hopefully we don't get yeah. copyrighted on YouTube. Um, um, sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Yeah, but. no, it's okay. Good background music. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, okay, so number five is being, uh, this is really common with new house flippers and with people who want to fix up a property and turn it up into a, turn it into a rental, uh, is they're being unrealistic about how much um, the rehab costs are going to run. So this is something I see homeowners, like traditional home buyers do constantly, is they see a house that's a total bomb job and needs to be gutted to the studs, mm -hmm. studs and needs like new roof, new windows, new siding, everything. And they think they can get it done for so much cheaper than oh, they, yeah, yeah. or they think they're going to do everything themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, rehab costs, you, you probably should talk to a professional. We'll get more into this later, but talk to a contractor, figure out how much it's really going to cost. Don't try to do everything yourself because you're, you know, unless you have some actual skills and experience in this right. stuff and tools. Yeah. <laughs> and tools, like unless you have that knowledge, mm -hmm. it's probably better not to do it yourself. Right. And, you know, it's better to do, use cheaper materials and have better quality craftsman's craftsmanship compared to using more expensive materials doing sure. it all yourself and the quality of construction right. and the uh the finish level mm -hmm. is just crappy mm -hmm. that, you know much better use cheaper materials hire it out make sure the workmanship is good yep yep um the other thing is uh being too optimistic about potential rents so this, this could be getting a little bit too emotional about a property. You see a potential rental property and you think, oh, I could rent, this is this is gonna be able to rent out for this much. You really need to learn the market. You need mm. to learn realistically what it's gonna rent for. If you're asking for the very top end of rents on everything, you're gonna have a very limited selection of applicants who actually apply to be a tenant sure, there. Sure, right. And you want more applicants so you can pick the best possible tenants. Mm -hmm. um, so be realistic about what it's going to rent for when you run your numbers and analyze the deal or else you could end up with a bad deal. Um, so another thing that, uh, that um, is another falls under being unrealistic number, number six here is they're being unrealistic about the type of deal that you can find in your, in your market. Okay. So, um, there's always like the talk of a 1% rule. I don't really like the 1% rule that much just because it, it's very broad, not specific enough. You, there are certain other factors you need to take into account, but that basically says that if I buy a house for a hundred grand, I need it to rent for 11 or about a thousand dollars a month. Yep. Okay. You need the gross monthly rents to be 1% of whatever you're buying it for. It doesn't sure. take okay. into account maintenance and repairs. Doesn't count, uh, doesn't account for who pays mm -hmm. utilities. That's probably yep. the biggest thing. Um, you know, it, there's a, it's missing a lot of things. So you could find something that's a 1% rule, but it's still a terrible deal depending on those other factors. Okay. Um, HOAs doesn't, right. doesn't factor in HOAs if yep. there are any. So, um, but if you think that you're going to somehow find a house in Grand Forks that you buy for $200,000 and it's going to rent for $2,500 a month, <clears throat> yeah. you're not, you're never going to buy anything. Mm -mm. Um, so you need to find out what's a realistic good deal that you can find. In, and you can in get a mortgage area. for that. Yeah. You, you need to, yeah, you need to find something like you need to make your criteria something that's actually going to be realistic. Right, you, that's just it. Yeah. It's got to be realistic. Yeah. Big word. So even though everybody thinks about big numbers when they're talking about cash flow, finding mm. something after your principal interest, taxes, insurance, repairs, maintenance, and vacancy that cash flows even like $100 a unit is actually a pretty good deal. Um, okay. Because when you think about setting aside 10% for maintenance and repairs, you're setting aside 5% for vacancy. If you're having it managed, uh, there's another mm -hmm. probably 10%, depending on how many units you have. You know, if you're cash flowing hundred bucks a unit and somebody else is paying off your loan for you and the property's appreciating in value, that's probably a pretty good deal. And your criteria is gonna change depending on what market you're in. You know, there might be markets where the values don't go up at all, but you can cash flow, you know, three, $400 a unit, um, but it's in a, you know, a terrible neighborhood crimes yeah. through the roof. You're getting really poor quality tenants. You're going to have a lot more issues. So mm -hmm. you got you got to think about that stuff. Um, another thing is getting really so number seven. I have getting emotionally involved in a property, and I've seen home buyers do this, and I've seen investors do this, and it's going to be new investors. Seasons seasoned investors don't operate off emotion, right? Sure, but they get so emotionally attached to the idea of becoming a real estate investor or the idea of this one property that they almost purposely ignore red flags or issues that are present. Um, and not really talking about issues like, like roof window siding, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. talking more about issues with the actual numbers. Yeah. Um, so don't be too optimistic and emotional about something. 
Um, and also on the other side, don't be so emotional where you're so scared of taking a risk that you never get off the fence and do it. That's, that's another thing like we have here. Um, number, number nine is being afraid of risk and never committing to anything. You yeah. Know, a good deal comes across your desk. You just take way too long to think about it and then it's gone. Pretty soon it's gone. I mean, you're never going to get anywhere without taking a risk once in a while. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There's, there's risk involved. Um, so uh, the other thing we've got here is not talking to professionals. So if you just are living in your own little bubble and you're sitting and you're learning about this stuff, some of these issues that we talked about, especially being unrealistic about rents, being unrealistic about rehab costs, you know, all that kind of stuff, talk to contractors, talk to successful real estate investors in your area, talk to property managers in your area, talk to a realtor that specializes in, um, in you know, rental property or mm -hmm. whatever, or flipping um, or investing in general. Um, you really need to talk and, and talk to lenders. So, you know, sometimes I see people like spend all this time preparing and, you know, they might spend years preparing and learning, but they've never talked to a lender. And then now they find out that, oh, it's going to be another two years until they can buy something when they finally do talk to a lender mm -hmm. versus if they would have talked to somebody early on, they could have gotten their ducks in a row. So they'd be actually ready to go. Sure. So talk to those professionals, get advice from people who know what they're doing. Now, when you say talk to the professionals, get the advice from the people, the professionals, um, really, it should just start with going to an expert, a realty expert like you guys. Yeah. And, uh, at least then you can point them and steer them in the right direction. Yep, yep. Um, I, I'd say uh, realtor, lender, um, contractor, property manager, other successful investors that you uh, that are you know a few steps ahead of where you're at mm -hmm. right now. Um, you know that's that's really like those people can provide so much more value than you should sure. be able to find on your own. Right. Okay. Um, and then the last thing, number ten, is not getting enough practice analyzing deals. So even if you don't have the money saved up yet, you don't have your financial situation squared away where you can get a loan yet, what you can do that's gonna be really beneficial is get practice analyzing deals. Mm -hmm. So look at homes that are for sale on the MLS, go on you know, Zillow or like my website or whatever, and look at multifamily properties or single family properties. If you're a flipper, look at rundown, you know, houses that need to be gutted. Um, if you, uh, you know, if you wanna be a rental property investor, look at those multifamily deals figure out what they would rent for do market research figure out what you need to buy them at for them to fit your criteria and you know you might find that you might find one that fits your criteria where it's priced right now based on your criteria or what you're mostly going to find is homes that don't quit fit your criteria at their current price what you need to do is work backwards and figure out what price you would need to get them at so okay. they fit your criteria and once you get a lot of experience with this you're going to be sure that a deal is a good deal when you see it do your like, homework yeah do your homework so you know a good deal when you see it that's going to give you the confidence to pull the trigger and not have that um fear of commitment it's going to help you get over a lot of those fears and it's going to just help you be way sharper because that's your main skill you need to have when you're out looking for deals you know they call you guys realty experts for a reason don't they john yeah yeah i like <laughs> yeah, to think yeah. so <laughs> i like to think so somebody wants to get a hold of realty expert john brodeen about any of these questions that we have talked about this week how do they get a hold of you so if you want to learn more about real estate, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, if you want to become a client, you're thinking about becoming a real estate investor and you just want to talk, uh, reach out to me on my cell, 701-213-5428. I'd be happy to sit down with you. You have yourself a very Merry Christmas, my friend. Yeah, you too, John. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, sounds good. All right, there you go. Uh, for the week your Berkshire Hathaway bi-weekly podcast with realty expert John Brodeen. We'll have one more of these bi-weekly podcasts, uh, two more coming up next week uh, before the new year. So um, until then, have yourself a great weekend, everybody, and have a Merry Christmas.